welcome to the first update in part two of building and organizing our home library. Like the intro said, if you missed it, there's a whole part one about actually building the home library. And this second part is more of just kind of putting like the finishing touches on it, a book haul and organizing the home library and just kind of giving you guys a tour of everything put together. I'm hoping that part two doesn't take as long as part one because it's like I said, a lot of finishing touches. But I have a few updates for you guys since we last chatted. First update I have is that I painted the trim in here, which I don't think I filmed because painting trim is really boring and I don't think anyone cares about it. But I will give you guys an overview after I stop talking about all the updates that I've made, like so you can visually see them. Two, we swapped out the curtain rod. So we originally just had a single curtain rod in here and I asked you guys in part one, what color curtains I should get. Navy was the winner. So I ended up getting navy curtains and then I decided to swap out the single rod for a double rod. So I really, really love how it turned out. This room is a little bit of a tricky size. I think on camera it comes off a lot bigger since my camera is a bit wider angle, but it's actually a square and it's really not big at all. So I really have to make do with using curtains and things that don't take up a lot of space to my advantage to really add to the room without making it look cluttered. Just such a cozy, moody, yet still bright space. And I think adding fun, colorful curtains is a good way to do it so that obviously the walls are pretty white in here because I wanted it to be white and bright because it doesn't get a lot of sun. I think it's a fun way to add some color into the space. Uh, second update, I have decided I'm gonna put a blanket ladder here. I don't have one yet. We still need to find one on Facebook Marketplace where I wanted to maybe put a mirror or some photos I'm just like not a big art girl and we have a lot of blankets in here because we've been spending a lot of time in here and the dogs like to spend time in here so I thought that would be a really fun way to make it a bit more cozy because the vibe for this room really is like a very cozy welcoming space and right now it just kind of feels like a living room I've been really struggling with a lamp because behind the chair where we're gonna put the lamp I need something there and I want it to be a lamp we also have this overhead hanging antique light and these are probably nine ten feet ceiling and so a normal size lamp is way too short in here but then a really tall one clashes with the overhead light and so I'm trying to find a good in between. Lamps are heavy and really annoying to return and this is like the fourth one I've tried so I really really hope this one works out. Then we have to still tackle the frame on the TV. I mentioned this in my organizing the bookcase video which I did film a whole video organizing this but we need to go through and like reorganize it like it was like an entry level organization so we're gonna do that at the end of this video but I just feel like I have so many updates for you guys. A lot of people were like why would you put a TV in here and I completely understand the thought process behind that especially if you're more of like a aesthetics interior design person but for me it doesn't bother me and this space is meant to feel like my cozy hobby room so truthfully it doesn't bother me that there's a tv in the middle of the library I know it might bother some people but at the end of the day obviously I always say this that you don't have to like what everyone else does I'm just sharing this journey with you guys ultimately I really wanted a tv in here so that I could play video games it doesn't personally bother me I also feel like it will look nicer too once it's hung up on the wall and we have that fake frame around it. It might blend in a bit more, but yeah, it kind of looks a little not cute just chilling on the bookcase right now. I'm not gonna lie, I totally agree with that. But I did buy something exciting that you might have seen on Instagram or TikTok. Got a scanner, a book scanner. And this is honestly so much fun. I wanted a way to catalog um, all of my books and this is like bringing my inner librarian dreams to life. I ended up going for the Libib platform and you don't need a scanner to do it. You can just use your phone camera as your barcode scanner. But I just thought this was like the cherry on top to having a home library. And so we're gonna go through, I've done some of the books, but I'll go through at the end and share with you guys how I do that. Cause I think it's just like really fun. Ooh, let me share this with you guys because if you watched the bookshelf organization video, I literally said how I wanted to start collecting the, I never know how to say it, Min Lima Harry Potter books. And literally that next day, I found two of them on like a huge sale for like 30 bucks each, which for a collector edition, I feel like is not too bad. The only thing that irks me is the numbers on the spines don't line up. So there's that. But I'm now in search of book two and I just love them so much and they're just so stunning and beautiful and they make me want to do a reread of Harry Potter. I actually haven't really even like opened them and like taken the time to look at them. Look how beautiful that is. Really excited about those and to have those on 
our bookshelves. I'm just really pumped about it. Um, I do have a really exciting book outlet haul in this video. They were having this insane sale. I want to say I got like nine or 10 books for 60 bucks. Sorry, that's the barcode scanner going off. And it like book outlet is hit or miss. It was literally like every book that I had on my TBR, which is such an insane deal. So I'm really excited for those to come. And when they come, I'll give you guys a haul and we can put them away together in the bookshelf. Um, but yeah, those are all the updates for now. I'm just drinking a little cold coffee shocker I forgot about it and yeah but I'm really excited welcome to part two I can't wait to take you guys along good morning you guys happy Sunday from the very messy library right now but coming to you with some updates I picked up the trim that we're going to use for the frame tv the other day I'm really excited about it this is ornamental molding or trim from Home Depot so it's a little bit more expensive but I really liked the detail in it and I think it'll make it look a bit more like a frame. So we're not doing that today. We'll probably do that next weekend. That is the trim that we picked out. The plan for today is to at least mount the TV just so we can get it off the ground here because I just, I don't think it looks very nice and it's mounted and we're ready to go when we put the frame on it. We're putting the pin board up today and I ordered a blanket ladder and that is, I have to pick that up on Thursday. I ordered one like from a small business on Facebook Marketplace. So that will go right here to replace this ladder. And Matt has been recruited to do all of this for me. So thank right, you so much. Okay, you guys, we're on the phone because if you are aware of the Saigon of Unfortunate Events, I fell down the stairs and dropped my camera this week, so I'm waiting for a replacement. But thank goodness for the trusty iPhone. I ordered this lamp from Rona. Literally yesterday, it came today. It was $30 Canadian. I feel like you either love or hate the rice paper shade. I think it's really cozy, personally. Lamps, floor lamps especially, are heckin' expensive. Okay. I think this is gonna work because it's about 70 inches, 69.7, and I can put it up on, like, a planter stand or something because, obviously, the chair will be behind, like, the lamp will be behind the chair. So, fingers crossed this works out because this is lamp number six that I've tried. I have bought and returned so many lamps, and if I could keep the lamp that is $30, dollars i will be honestly so happy so i'm gonna set this up and we'll see what we think about it Honestly, love it so much. I feel like it's so cozy. This is it, not raised on any books, which is like the tallest lamp I've been able to find so far. And I didn't really want to do an arch lamp here because we obviously have the hanging overhead light over here. I wanted something that was really just like a straight up lamp. So I think this works so well and oh, I'm so happy about it. So I'm going to try and look for like a crate or something to prop it up on to make it just like even a little bit like bring it up here. But for 30 something bucks, Seriously, such a win. I love it so much. I'm actually just about to head out and go pick up a blanket ladder that I ordered on Facebook Marketplace. I really wanted to support a small business and it ended up being way more affordable than like Amazon or Wayfair. It was, I think, $50. And I got a dark espresso color to match the furniture in here. You guys, I am loving the lamp. And the ironic part is that it ends up being the $30 lamp that I loved the most. Like it just, it's just so cozy. I do feel like you either love or hate the rice paper shade lamps and if you don't like it that's totally okay but I love it. I like that it's a bit thicker 
than a normal lamp because it kind of fills up that corner a little bit too and it's just it's so cozy at night I'll put in some clips it's just a vibe so my plan for this weekend is to rub and buff the base of it I think if I don't get to it that's not the end of the world but I would really like to do that um that way it's just like more of a goldy antique color and the baby gate you guys is so awesome I will link it down below I highly recommend it. it's really tall it's 42 inches tall I believe so neat I mean Stella can't jump she's she's a little she's a little you know bit of a, a girthier dog um but Delilah she's got hops in her and she cannot jump over it it's like really really tall so I love that it's retractable too because you can barely see it and obviously we have like white trim in our doors so it's not super noticeable when you walk in the house which I really really like and even when it's like up the baby gates up it doesn't look too bad I find so I'm really really happy with that but the plan for this weekend is we are going to build the frame for the TV I have the trim right here that is Matt's task for the weekend because I really want to get this video up either Sunday or Tuesday for you guys to organize the rest of our books. Obviously, I've just been like accumulating books here and there at thrift stores, book sales, all that kind of stuff. I really want to show you guys how I use my book scanner and I need to do all of the... I think I still need to do these two shelves here. I feel like Book Outlet is super hit or miss. Like they either have really good books or nothing that I'm looking for. And if you guys don't know, they're like a... I don't really know what you would call it is it a discounted online bookstore like what is yeah like a discounted bookstore at least 50 percent off list prices i don't really yeah i don't really know how they work but they're actually a canadian owned company which is really really awesome and i got all of these books for 64 dollars one two three four five six seven eight nine ten books and a bunch of them are hardcover and when i tell you guys all of these books were on my tbr like there's just like something about when you like thrift or buy secondhand books or like discount books that like they're all books on your tbr because i feel like sometimes it's like books you've never heard of so i'm really excited so i figured it was only fitting because we're organizing and building a home library to add some books from my tbr to it so first we have revel by lisa smith this was on the indigo like top author or top book a few months ago and this just says on the island of charmant magic flows like bootleg champagne and fantasies can be bought for the price of a gemstone i've heard this is kind of loosely like a prohibitions 1920s fantasy new york kind of vibe so i'm really really excited about this the cover is just gorgeous next we have the wrath and the dawn by renee i never know how to say her last name but she also wrote the beautiful which is like a vampire new orleans book that i loved i was looking up on tiktok underrated fantasy books and this came up so i'm really excited to read that i have heard really good things about a thousand heartbeats by kira cass i tried to read the selection series or whatever it was and i thought it was garbage but i figured for like four bucks i could give it another go no i read the betrothed oh do you guys remember maybe if you've been here a while i read the betrothed i picked it up at the airport because i forgot my kindle on a trip and it was i gave it like one star um i've heard pretty good things about this so really excited this was on so many people's top books of 2023 like videos or lists it is a dowry of blood by st gibson i am really excited about this like i kid you not every day when i'm scrolling on tiktok i see one person talk about this book dowry of blood is a glittering tale of obsession seduction and power as told through the letters of dracula's first bride con constanta constanta i've heard nothing but amazing things about this you guys i got this book for three dollars i'm so excited to read it once again it was on like an underrated beginner fantasy book rex i actually picked this up at the library but then someone wanted it so i had to bring it back but it's a house of salt and sorrows by aaron craig it says full of ghosts and gods in a waterfront world in a manor by the sea 12 sisters are cursed it just sounds kind of spooky and atmospheric and fun also on so many people's top books of the year list essay cause bees all the sinners bleed um this is also the author of razor blade tears I really want to get to this this year if i'm not mistaken yeah this was a 2023 release like book outlet it there it's a banger right now this just says a black sheriff a serial killer a small town ready to combust uh the illuminaries by susan dennard i think once again came across this on like a underrated fantasy books on tiktok tiktok hemlock falls isn't like other towns you won't find it on a map your phone won't work here and the forest outside town might just kill you that sounds good I just read The Shadows Between Us and absolutely loved it. So when I saw that Daughter of the Pirate King was on Book Outlet, I was like, yes, I need to read this. I loved her writing. So anyways, this is another one of Trisha Levenseller's books. For fans of Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm curious to see if I'm going to like this. I didn't um, love the pirate sea aspect of Tress of the Emerald Sea. So I'm curious to see if I'm going to like this. And then lastly, we had The Change by Kristen Miller, which once again was on a lot of people's top books of the year list. Three women discover that a midlife brings a new type of empowerment, putting them on a collision course with evil lurking in their wealthy beach town. 
I think this is a thriller. Yeah, they discover a teenage girl's abandoned body. So definitely a thriller. Really excited about that as well. So that was my little book outlet haul. You guys know I'm very passionate about discount books, bargain books, and you can get good popular titles if you just have patience and you wait for them. Because it's kind of crazy if you think about it. Like if this on its own brand new was $25 and I got all of these books for $60, that means like if I went to the bookstore, I basically could have gotten just like two of these books for the price of all of them, which is just a little wild to me so those are the updates that i have we're gonna go pick up the blanket ladder and then we really just got to do some finishing touches on the library and then also just organize all of the books but i have to say there's just like something about having books kind of just like around your bookcase that's kind of kind of a vibe i don't know really know what it is about it but i really like it i'm just i'm just really excited about it Happy Saturday, you guys. We are getting this library finished this weekend. I'm so excited. I just got my rub and buff out. I have European gold and antique gold. I think for now, I'm just gonna rub and buff this part because you don't see the base. And honestly, I just really wanna get this video up tomorrow for you guys. So I think I'm just gonna do this and then at like a later date, I'll do this. And I really need to do some book organization today because I've obviously just like acquired some books here and there from like thrift stores or like, Christmas gift cards that I've had I've ordered books so we need to really put a lot of these books away and we're slowly starting to add to this last shelf which is really really exciting so gonna do that <laughs> Here is a little look at the lamp. I think it turned out so well. The makeup brush was definitely the way to do it. <laughs> way easier. And I pretty much got the whole lamp done. I started the base, but then I was worried I was going to run out of rub and buff. So I wanted to wait and do the frame first, of course. And then if I have any extra, I will finish the base off. But I, I did it. I just only did like one layer. You can still see the silver underneath. So I need to fix that up after. <music>
love the frame TV, but don't love the price. I have the perfect DIY for you. Let's make a frame for our TV under $75 Canadian. We just built our home library and I wanted our TV to blend in a little bit more. So I headed to Home Depot and picked up some beautiful trim with detail. Getting trim with detail is the key to making it look like an antique frame. And then we did a lot of measuring trial and error. Make sure you cut everything at a 45 degree angle. So it fits like a frame you're gonna need four pieces. And then we got to gluing this bad boy together. We used miter bond, but you could use wood glue. And then I highly recommend putting on some brackets for some extra support. You guys will see, we put all the support we could, and then we cut out a little hole for the TV sensor. This is what it looked like before I painted it. I went in with the European gold rub and buff. I find this gives it the most authentic antique frame looking opposed to spray paint and then we got this sewing band which i saw all over tiktok just for some once again more added support on your frame we stuck that behind the tv when we mounted it that way it couldn't fall off and honestly i was really happy with how this turned out i just i'm obsessed here is what the Libib app looks like. I forget I showed it on my phone because I'm sure that's how most people are going to do it. But I do have a reel and a TikTok showing you guys how to do it on the computer as well. But I figured this is probably how most people are doing it. You go to the little plus sign and then you can either do a manual or barcode. So manual would be like looking up the book and then like it's... And you can do more than books. You can do books, movies, music, and video games, which is nice. But you can also do the barcode and you can do barcode so you can put by book and like i said you can do it right from your phone you don't need a barcode scanner i just think the barcode scanner is really fun but absolutely not necessary i'm trying to do it while i'm filming but you basically just put it over the barcode and then it will add the book for you item added to your collection scan another item or delete item so that's like the basis of it it's super straightforward you guys will see in a sec i'll show you guys how i do it but you just scan the book and it does the same instead of using your phone camera so anyways that's kind of how i do that guys it is officially done well i'd say it's like 90 percent done but i am so excited it's truly everything i wanted and more and i'm so excited to share this video with you guys i have some art going on the tv which if you look up tv art on youtube it rotates in about 10 minute increments just because if you leave a still image on your tv for too long it can burn into the screen apparently i'd say the library is like 90 percent done there's definitely some things we're going to do over time for the most part it's finished and i can't wait to share this video with you guys the things that are left to do are kind of not boring things but like not really fun things and we just have a lot of projects on the go right now that it's not the highest of priority like the library as a whole is done and that's all i could truly ask for so i need to grab some plants that hang over the side here i just honestly didn't get to it it's like minus 20 minus 25 degrees celsius this weekend and i was not going anywhere if i didn't have to so i definitely think i'll get some plants in the next few weeks but that is a goal just to bring some greenery in here i think that would look really really nice i'd like to hang some off of the tops just because two of the tops don't go right to the ceiling which i got some questions about that our plan is to bring them up to the ceiling one day we just have to brainstorm and figure that out and once again, it just wasn't the biggest priority right now, but the plan is to bring the bookcases to the ceiling and then have some library lights installed with like a really nice big piece of trim. And the last thing we have to do is some finishing touches on the bookshelf. You can probably see, I'm trying to see if you can see it in the viewfinder, that there is a space between the bookcase and the wall. And so we just need to fill that in with a little piece of trim and some caulking. But we haven't done it yet because we were considering doing shiplap on the back wall just to give it some kind of texture. So we weren't going to seal it up if we were just going to do shiplap. So you guys will see that throughout the vlogs because I'm starting a new series called The Homebody Diaries where we just like share everyday life. I share what I'm reading, home projects, etc. So you guys will definitely see that in those videos. But those are some of the things that we need to still do. So yeah, I was getting a ton of comments on Instagram when I said the library was done and like for the most part it's done but we have some finishing touches to do for sure in the next few months if you're thinking oh my gosh carter it's not done because there's a crack there and it's not 
perfectly built in. I know we will get to it, I promise, but just some finishing touches we need to get to. I'd also love to get some flameless candles, I think, for right here that would look really nice. Obviously, in the winter, it'll look so beautiful with some garland, but I was thinking of doing some uh, flameless candles just to also maybe help hide these wires for a little bit. Once again, just didn't get to the store at all this weekend. I do not want to leave the house if I don't have to. It's freezing out. And you guys know, I like to get things secondhand and antique and thrift and all that stuff. So I'm just taking my time with the finishing touches, whether it just be like candles, decor. Um, I want to, I wanted to do the pin board in this video and use the rub and buff that I used on the TV frame just to tie in some elements of the same gold everywhere. I ran out of rub and buff, so it's not coming until next week, but I will also do the pin board as well. But yeah, the library is done, which is so exciting. I'll take you guys through how I organized my books and give you guys a little bookshelf tour. Also, I wanted to give you guys a close up of the frame. There are definitely little pieces here and there that you can tell that we still need to touch up, but I just ran out of rub and buff. But for the most part, it's done. It's just like, it just turned out so well. And then, like I mentioned here, is kind of just like some of the cable management we need to work on, but it'll be a pretty easy fix and we know how to do it. We just haven't gotten to it yet. Like I mentioned, we have the two containers right here. In this first bookshelf, we have a row of horror books here and Mando, apparently. I know some of these aren't technically horror. They're like thriller-esque or they're Stephen King books that aren't horror, but... I felt like Stephen King was a horror novelist and I just kind of ran out of room on the thriller shelf. We have my witchy books slash like fall books. So these are all books that have to do with like fall, spooky season, witches, all that kind of stuff. Then we have my thrillers here and these are all in last name alphabetical order or as best as I could do. Then we've got romance. And then we've got memoirs and space books for Matt. Two right here are series, mainly fantasy series, but we do have some other series in there. Like I have the Dirty Air series there. I have the Twisted series and then Chestnut Springs over here. We've got Walt over here. We've got our Harry Potter shelf and then our Percy Jackson books. Um, This shelf, we have my George R.R. R. Martin collection. I have a few missing. They're kind of like around the house. These are all standalone uh, fantasy. Some of them are the first book in a series, but if I don't have the second book in a series, it stays here until I have the next book in the series because to me, it's technically like not standalone, but I only have one book. So we have the two organizers on this side and then this is kind of a random shelf. It's just a lot of our like nicer books, comic books. This is actually a fake book that has all of my Kindle stickers in it. And then I just have my uh, Canon because I was taking shots for this video actually with my Sigma lens. And on the skinny shelves on this side, we have library books. And then these are books I'm currently reading slash recently finished. I'm trying to figure it out. When I do my wrap ups, I like to be able to just like grab a stack of books and go. So I think this is going to be books that I've finished. And then these are books that like I kind of want to read next. These were like a hodgepodge, mostly just uh, historical fiction, literary fiction, random books that, you know, some of them are nonfiction as well. And then we have more nonfiction up there. But yeah, this is like a random assortment. Like I randomly have a Christmas Christina Lauren book. That is an overview of the home library and how I organize the books. <laughs> standing here to hide the cords just for a second to make it nicer but that is the video I cannot wait to share this with you guys like I said I think it's about 90% done but I'm really really happy with it and I can't wait to share the video with you guys maybe give you guys some ideas you guys know we love doing things on a budget and I don't think I did a budget breakdown for this but I'm a big believer in highs and lows so areas you want to spend on invest on and areas that you can kind of forego spending a lot on so I'd say for us, the thing that we really wanted to make sure we spent good quality on was chairs or a couch, whatever we did in here, because we wanted it to be comfy. So the chairs were the most expensive part of the whole project, and they came in about $1,000 for both of them, which I guess is still pretty good when you compare it to like Wafer and other websites, and we love them. Everything else pretty much was secondhand, thrifted, Facebook Marketplace, or um, we got on sale. So lamp $30 the blanket ladder we got I that was $50 I got that on Facebook marketplace coffee table 20 or 30 side table 20 the rug actually we ended up getting for free because Amazon sent us the wrong size and board we already had curtains I'd say for the rod and both curtains was like maybe $70 for everything which I feel like is good um, Amazon has really great curtain rods and Ikea has the best curtains 
the TV we got on sale on Boxing Day for about $400. And then it is a 55 inch, which is why it was a little bit less expensive. And uh, I didn't really care if it was like the best TV in the world because it's really just to watch YouTube and play video games. And then this is like very specific to us, but the bookcases ended up being pretty much free because we um, returned a cabinet that we had bought uh, for our old house that we didn't like in this house. And the cabinet was about $500 and the bookshelves were about $500. So kind of worked out that I think maybe max we paid about $100 for the bookcases, which is awesome. So uh, that's like a little price breakdown. If you guys are interested, you guys know, I just, I think it's really important when you're doing a home project to like find one thing you want to invest in and then try and source the other things a little less expensive if you can. It's just kind of what works for us. So yeah, it's definitely not 100% done, but I'm excited to share some updates in the vlogs with you guys in the next little bit. I'm excited to have kind of like my own space in the house and I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll talk to you guys next time. Bye!